Our staff has put in their efforts to compile and release in-house publications. There are two publications to be released today. The first one is articles from Goa today on villages of Goa, which have been compiled in three volumes. The first volume is on South Goa and the second is on North Goa, which has been divided into two parts, from volume 1, A to M, and volume 2, N to Z. It is compiled by Mrs. Mariana Paiva and Sneha Malkanekar. Cover design and layout by Mr. Sarvesh Kudalkar and Mr. Gurudas Asgaonkar. I request Dr. Teotar Bisuza to please release this publication. Annual report of Central Library is compiled by Mr. Carlos M. Fernandez, Mrs. Sulaksha Kurmale, and Mrs. Snehal Chopdekar. Cover design and layout by Mr. Sachin Naik. I request our Deputy Director of Art and Culture, Mr. Ashok Parab, to release the book. Head of the History Department of the Universidad Luzofone de Humanidades y Tecnología Lisbon. We are privileged to have him here with us. The founder director of Xavier Center of Historical Research in 1979, who inculcated love for history in the author with whom she was acquainted from the beginning of his research. He is the head of the History Department of Universidad Lusofone de Humanidades in e technology as Lisbon. He has to his credit many contributions. He has written many books, some edited and some co-edited, and over 180 research articles. Dr. De Souza is well versed in Goan history and culture. His book, Medieval Goa, was based on his PhD thesis. Currently, he is in Goa to release his book, Goa, Outgrowing Colonialism. 
I request Dr. D'Souza to say a few words. Good morning to you all. I'm thankful for the privileged position of a special guest of the President to be uh, to Dr. Carlos and to the whole team of this library. Uh, my stay visit to Goa has been, as just announced, for the release of a book which was already released yesterday. And But uh, here we are to celebrate the Librarian's Day. And I have quite a few librarians here present who have played an important part in my life as a historian. So one of my always keen desires is, has always been to be friends with the librarians. So I think part of our work is done if we get along well with the librarians, that has been my experience. And we need them in the whole process of our research, with me as a researcher. And that has been my long experience in, in find, finding, getting the help of the librarians, and also in producing some librarians. I think in the process of my own work, uh, I was deeply involved in library building, not just library sciences, library science, but as library builder. And I know the value of the books, not just the books, the manuscripts as well, and the value they have and their necessity for all the work that we do as historians, as researchers. And before the Xavier Center could come into existence for many years earlier, I had been going around collecting private books because I think librarians organized them, and make them available, maintain them, but then the books have to come from somewhere. And if we wait for the government to arrange and get the books, I think we will not reach very far. So what we need is many other types of efforts. And I was always inspired to some extent during my formation in my history uh, in Pune. And one of my models still remains to be Rajwade, V.K. Rajwade. For V.K. Rajwade is a great myth at times when Europe was thinking of modern history. We had this man who independently of European influence was thinking in the same lines, or better lines even. While in Europe, the modern history was built around the concept of state papers. Here, he was already thinking of private papers. And as individual, individual efforts, that's where my, has been my inspiration. Individual can do a lot. Without having to wait for institutional support, that comes later on, and we need it as well. But as individual, I think each one of us can do a lot of things if we are sufficiently inspired. And in that sense, Rajwadi always inspired me. Even someone who wrote after that uh, obituary for him, uh, the last words of the obituary were, rest, restless spirit, rest. <laughs> so he was a restless spirit. He would go around from house to house, especially the houses that we had, he had already marked as the houses to be visited. They were the houses of the sarkars, so money lenders. And he knew the importance of the money lenders for the economy of the village, rural economy. We might hate them, but we need them, and they have their part to play. And he would go to those houses he had identified and ask for the papers if the houses, the family had kept them. And very often we know the family, uh, it's a delicate matter to get family papers. So they would uh, hesitate uh, or sometimes refuse immediately. And whenever he got a refusal, which was normally the first reaction, he would tell the gentleman, look, if you don't give me now, I'll collect it from your widow. 
<laughs> and after that, there was no argument. They would say, take and go. <laughs> and those, those were his strategy. So he would go on with sack on his back, collecting the manuscript material, and gather them somewhere. Today we have a Rajwadi Institute, which is one of the precious collections. But this implies a lot of personal hard work, besides the strategy of winning uh, the sympathies and the collaboration of the people. You, you have to survive first to do the, all this work. Rajwadi would hardly have his regular meals. He would carry laddus in his pocket. And whenever he was hungry, he would take it and eat and continue his work. So whole life spent like that as a missionary of the, you might call it library builder, the library builder. He was also a national. There are some other parts of our life solvers. We are good fellows, we are bad fellows. We have different feature, aspects of our character and temperament. So he is not very well known. Outside India, he is hardly known. Today, Wikipedia gives a lot of information on him, but he's not known outside India, though he is such a pioneer of library building. And why is he not so well known? Uh, because he was uh, quite a, I would say, a very convinced nationalist. He left a will at the end. Not, he, he published many of those documents in 18 volumes of uh, documents he was collecting with long, long introductions, sometimes longer than his documents, suit thing. Uh, but then he left a will saying, uh, none of these should be translated into English. <laughs> so they remained in Marathi. So I think uh, we should uh, have cultivate some of our good things try to control some of uh, these fanatic ideas or uh, prejudices. Because they harm us in the long run and they harm the cause that we try to promote. Uh, I'm telling this all because these are kind of things which just as a young student of MA, student of history, I learned these things and was inspired by it. Today people might find the Xavier Center, all things well organized and things, but for many years I was collecting the books just as an individual researcher, going from to the families, building contacts with the families. Sometimes it took years together convincing the families until you made some good friend with a girl of the family. Then <laughs> things would come more easily. <laughs> but we had to persevere. And then I would bring those books, keep under my bed in the Jesuit house because there was no place elsewhere during many years. And then space was always a problem. Fortunately, the Xavier Center then could be put up. And it has space now for many things. And there are many private collections. That is the specific contribution of the Xavier Center. So unlike the state books published that have to go to the central library, uh, there, there is no obligation of anyone giving the books. But many books are being given after the first initial collections came. Uh, those who are familiar with it will know. Mrs. Lelia is one of my uh, great and right hands at the time and for many years. And for the Charles also, who was trained in library science, but then he became assistant director and historian. Uh, but he's also a trained in library science. Uh, now we have a, a present day decider of the future of uh, this time. Okay. Savio Abrio, who is there, who is taking the thing forward. And I wish that this kind of individual uh, effort should continue and not wait for somebody else to do things for you. In the long run, people might appreciate what you have done. Uh, but in the, during that period, uh, you don't get much recognition. Very few people know what you do. Uh, but that's how things are built. Uh, I must thank all of you here for listening to me more patient for more time than was allotted to me. <laughs> and thank you very much. Thank you, sir. I request Bindya Gaude to
to introduce our chief guest for today. of Central Library. He completed his school and college education at Lingaraj College, Bangalore. BA and MA from Karnataka University, Darwa. Diploma in Library Science from MS University, Baroda. In 1960, he joined the Karnataka University Library as assistant librarian, then lecturer in Library Science Department, the first postgraduate library training center in Karnataka, founder member of KULSA, Karnataka University Library Association. Associated with Timeless Fellowship, a general in library science published by KUSA. In December 1967, he joined as creator Central Library. He was responsible for modernizing library services at Central Library. Village and Taluka libraries were open. Mobile library services were introduced. The first draft of public library bill was prepared and submitted to the government. Also submitted a plan for a new library building. At his request, government appointed a library expert committee with Sri K. S. Deshpande, librarian, Karnataka University Library as its chairman. The committee reports on the problems and prospects of the central library with a plan for the public library structure. Was published with forward by Sri K. T. Satravala, then governor of Goa. Many of his proposals long remain on paper and some have been subsequently attended. Retarded from service on animation in January 1992. Thank you, Bindya. I now request Mr. V.B. Hubli, ex-curator of Central Library and our chief guest for today's function, to say a few words. celebrating Dr. Ranganathan's birthday and this birthday is being celebrated almost throughout India, almost all colleges, universities and all places his uh, birthday is uh, celebrated and on this auspicious day a PR book is being released I am very happy. Just I had gone through the book and and noted some points. First I will go through it. I am very happy to release the book, Texts, Tomes, Treasures by Pierre Rodriguez, ex-curator of the Central Library in Goa. I have gone through the book and enjoyed reading it. On this occasion, I see a few words about the book. It is for the first time a sincere attempt has been made to trace the history of Goa's Central Library, which is the oldest library in India. It started in the year 1832 as Publica Libraria. In writing this book, Pia has extensively used all available material on this subject. Dr. Rangnathan said, library is a growing organization and Publica Libraria slowly grew in size and services. Today, Krishnada Shama, the State Central Library has a spacious building of its own with all amenities for the readers and the staff. To reach this point, it took nearly 180 years. Secondly, in Goa, library movement by uh, efforts by government as such started with the five year plans, starting with fifth fire plan in the year 1974. It was faster during 8th, 9th and 10th fire plans under this uh, period. Pierre was looking after this, all these plans. Very hard working and, uh, uh, during this period. District, Taluka and village libraries were open. Um, Goa Public Library Act was passed. Though the beginning has been made, it is not enough. Lot more is to be done. It is for the curator, uh, Carlos Fernandes, to 
take up this mission forward. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Library has got a lot of readers. We have a few readers who were very regularly re referring to the books and reading the books from this section, from this library. Amongst them, we have chosen a few. Some may have been intimated before, some may have not been intimated. I'm sorry if I'm calling you all upstage last minute. I request our chief guest to felicitate these readers. Mr. Paldesai. Dr. Kenkre. I just want to say a very few words uh, regarding Mrs. Menezes. The, the, the key word in a book is evolution. Evolution, that's a very key word. And you must realize at what stage India is today. India is a very ancient civilization. And uh, the cost of paper uh, has gone up. The cost of paper has gone up. And uh, perhaps uh, we, we are looking elsewhere uh, as to what the cost of paper is. Uh, so, so the, what I want to say is that uh, being an ancient civilization, we are forgetting that in the Indian civilization, uh, the written word, the written word, which uh, was written first by Lord Brahma on 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 on, um, on leaves, on green leaves, and <clears throat> it was translated into uh, various languages, including the Sanskrit language by uh, Chanakya, who was the Prime Minister of uh, Maurya dynasty. But the point I'm trying to make is to see the cost of paper, and paper was printed in 14th century. While Lord Brahma wrote a book called Arthashastra, Art of Governance, which is unrivaled, unrivaled in the human history. And so when we look at evolution, you see we have to consider how far back to go. So India is a center point of evolution and India is a center point of art of governance. The governance has failed everywhere. Everywhere it has failed. So India is given a lead in this. Uh, uh, so we talk of China. Of course, the, 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 the paper was printed in China. The Chinese invention, but the cost has gone up. So we have to be very careful how far, uh, what to accept and what to reject. Thank you. Uh, Dr. Celso Pinto. Mr. B. Cruz. Thank you. to the end of today's inaugural session. No duty is more urgent than that of returning thanks. I call upon Mrs. Suluksha Kulmale to propose a vote of thanks. I say this is the Sabhaya Kunundi Purdi Sabhaya Grantapala. Abhar Pradarshana Chakam Mujakadana Yulia Sar. I say a karyavarik 
लाभिल्ले मुखेल सोयरे श्री विधी उबळी हांचे आम्ही आभारी असा तसेच आजच्या कार्यावळीचे मानाचे सोयरे श्री माधव बोरकर हांचे आम्ही आभारी असा तसेच आईचे खास आमंत्री डॉक्टर तिओतोनियो डिसोजा हांचे आम्ही काळजातले देव बरे करू म्हणून मागतात आणि तसेच आईच्या कार्यक्रमात हजर आशिल्ले डेप्युटी डायरेक्टर श्री अशोक परब आणि ए ओ श्री कोसंबे हांचे आम्ही आभारी असा तसेच आमची पिया मॅडम ज्यांनी आज हिस्ट्री ऑफ लाईफ सेंट्रल लायब्ररीचे बुक बरेला ताजे हा उक्तावण करण्याची संधी ताणी आमच्या दिल्या बद्दल आम्ही त्यांचे आभारी असा तसेच हा जमिल्ले आमचे सगळे वांगडी एन जी ओ लायब्ररीयन्स डिस्ट्रिक्ट लायब्ररी स्टाफ तालुका लायब्ररी स्टाफ गव्हर्नमेंट विलेज लायब्ररी स्टाफ आणि हेर सगळे मानीस जे हा हजर असा तसेच आमचं सेंट्रल लायब्ररीचं स्टाफ अकाउंट्स एडमिनिस्ट्रेशन लायब्ररीयन लायब्ररी अटेंडंट सगळ्यांचे आम्ही आभारी असा हा आशिल्ले प्रिंट आणि नॉन प्रिंट मीडिया ज्यांनी या कार्यक्रमाची दखल घेतल्या त्यांचे आम्ही आभारी असा आणि एक कळवणी असा एन जी ओ लायब्ररीयना तांची आर एल एफ ची जी बुक पार्सल असा लास्ट फाटल्या वर्षाची आणि ह्या वर्षाची ताणी तांची हा नाव कॉल आउट करतली जी ताणी वेली ना ताणी श्रीमती श्रद्धा शेट्ये हांचे कडे कॉन्टॅक्ट करचे त्या बुकाच्या खातीर आणि हो प्रोग्राम हा सोपता भायर च्याची व्यवस्था केली असा सगळ्यांनी भायर एक दहा मिनटं च्या घेऊन जातकीर भितर येऊपचे आणि मोटिवेशन वर्कशॉप सुरू जातले मिसेस पिया ब्रॉड्रिक्स बुक इज अवेलेबल आउटसाइड एट अ नॉमिनल रेट ऑफ हंड्रेड एंड फिफ्टी रुपीज समीर समीर 